Hi, my name is Tom Bierbauer. I'm a principal member of technical staff within the Oracle Coherence Group. I'll be making a presentation on the Coherence Transaction Framework. In this presentation, I'm going to cover the following. I'll answer the question, what is the transactional framework? I'll show you the basic configuration of a transactional cache. I'll cover the basics of how to use a transactional cache, and I'll go over some of the current limitations of the transactional framework. What is the transaction framework? The transaction framework is a new feature of Coherence 3.6 that allows the use of coherence caches within the context of a transaction. This includes most of the name cached APIs, including queries, entry processors, and aggregators. Of course, the transaction framework provides the ASIC guarantees that you would normally expect from a transactional resource. It also provides multiple read isolation levels and deferred operations. The transactional framework provides transactional caches, which are a specialized form of distributed caches. Transactional caches are used whenever you would want to use coherence in the context of a transaction. The transactional framework introduces a new transactional connection that represents a logical connection to a coherence data grid. The connection acts as a factory for transactional cache instances. A transactional connection allows you to set auto commit mode. In auto commit mode, a transaction is scoped to a single operation. In non-auto commit mode, the transaction may span multiple operations and must be explicitly ended with either a commit or rollback call. The transactional connection also allows you to set an isolation level. Read committed is the default isolation level. This isolation level guarantees that only committed data is visible and doesn't provide any consistency guarantees. This is the weakest of the isolation levels and will generally be the most performant at the cost of read consistency. Statement consistent read isolation provides statement scoped read consistency. This isolation level guarantees that all the data read by a single operation comes from a single point in time when the statement began execution. Statement monotonic consistent read isolation is the same as statement consistent read isolation, except that all reads are guaranteed to be monotonic. This means that a read is guaranteed to return a version that is equal to or greater than any version that was previously encountered while using the connection. Transaction consistent read isolation provides transaction scoped read consistency. This isolation level guarantees that all the data read in a transaction comes from a single point in time when the transaction began. Transaction monotonic consistent read isolation is the same as transaction consistent read isolation, except that all reads are guaranteed to be monotonic. The transactional connection also allows you to set eager mode. When in eager mode, every operation is immediately flushed to the grid. In non-eager mode, the flush of the operation may be deferred, which may be more performant since some of the operations may be batched when they are flushed. The transactional framework introduces new operations for the support of optimistic transactions. Each operation has an associated predicate in the form of a filter that is used to ensure that the value being updated is the expected value. Update and delete operations have explicit predicates where the insert has an implicit predicate. Typically when the value is read, and later modified in the scope of a transaction, a predicate is supplied to ensure that the value being modified is the same value that was previously read. The transactional framework uses a recovery manager to recover transactions when members that are acting as a transaction coordinator leave the service. If a transaction picked up from a departed member was partially committed, then the recovery manager will drive that transaction to completion. Any transactions being recovered that are not partially committed will be rolled back. Coherence includes a J2E Connector Architecture 1.5 compliant resource adapter that is used to get connections to a coherence cache. Since the resource adapter leverages the coherence transaction framework, it provides the same transactional guarantees. In addition, it provides full XA support. This resource adapter replaces the previous version of the coherence resource adapter. If an application needs to use coherence as a transactional resource in a distributed transaction, it can do so through the coherence resource adapter. The Coherence Resource Adapter plugs into the application server through a set of system-level contracts defined by the connector architecture. The Coherence side of the system-level contracts are implemented by the Coherence Resource Adapter. The Resource Adapter and Application Server collaborate to provide services such as global transaction enlistment, connection pooling, and connection sharing. The application accesses Coherence through the Resource Adapter using the normal Coherence client APIs. How to configure a transactional cache. Transactional caches are defined within the cache configuration file using a transactional scheme element. 
A transactional scheme includes many of the same elements and attributes that are available to a distributed cash scheme. Note the service name in the transactional scheme. This service name is given when creating transactional connections. The named cash API can be used to perform cash operations implicitly within the context of a transaction. This approach does not allow an application to change the default transaction behavior. Transactions are in auto commit mode when using the named cash API approach. This means each operation is immediately committed when it is successfully completed. Multiple operations cannot be scoped to a single transaction. The named cache API approach is ideally suited for ensuring atomicity guarantees when performing single operations such as put all. The following example demonstrates a simple client that obtains a transactional named cache instance from the cache factory. The client performs a put all operation that is only committed if all the put operations succeed. The transaction is automatically rolled back if any part of the put all operation fails. The connection API is used to perform cache operations within a transaction and provides the ability to explicitly control transaction behavior. For example, applications can enable or disable auto commit mode and change transaction isolation levels. Note the passing of the service name in the factory create connection call. Connections are created for a given service. This means they can span multiple partitions and or caches within the same service but cannot span multiple services. This example also shows how we can set auto commit mode, isolation level, and eager mode on a transactional connection. Here we see how to use multiple coherence caches in a single transaction. Notice that we obtain two caches and do an insert on each in the context of a transaction. This means that both of the inserts will be committed together when the transaction commits or both will be rolled back in the event of an exception. This example demonstrates the use of the optimistic name cache interface. Note the filter passed into the update. If the filter check fails, a predicate failed exception is thrown. If the filter check passes, the update is made. In order to use the coherence resource adapter, it must be deployed to an application server, like Oracle's WebLogic server. An application may use a JNDI lookup to obtain a connection factory for producing transactional connections, as seen in this example. Once the coherence connection is obtained, the application can access coherence using the normal coherence client APIs. In this example, the application controls a distributed transaction through the user transaction instance obtained from the application server via a JNDI lookup. Note that the use of a managed coherence connection in the context of a distributed transaction will cause the container and resource adapter to enlist the connection with the distributed transaction. Any work done on the coherence connection in the context of the transaction will either commit or roll back with that transaction. This example demonstrates the use of a coherence connection along with a JDBC connection in the context of a distributed transaction. Note that the coherence connection may be just one of multiple resources enlisted with a distributed transaction. In this case, a connection to a database is also enlisted. This means that the work done on the coherence connection will either be committed or rolled back with the work on the database connection when the transaction completes. Note that this mechanism could be used for implementing a transactional cache aside pattern with coherence. That was the Transaction Framework for Coherence 3.6. Here are some links for more information.